Hello, everybody, and welcome to Coder's Workshop, a show where me and Putnam talk about all things Dwarf Fortress. If you've never heard an episode of this show before, long story short, we go through the recent update and or patch notes, and then also talk about some other things that she's been working on. If you would like to see timestamps, there should be timestamps down in the description of this video where you can jump around to specific places that sound interesting to you or give the whole thing a listen. With all that being said, I hope that you enjoy April's Coder's Workshop and the following video. Up until this point, uh, Dwarf Fortress Premium hasn't had any beta branches or anything. It's just it's just been the normal branch and stuff would just go out. Um, and I, I remember a couple of weeks ago, somebody mentioning, I think it might've been Tarn in a future in the Fortress saying that uh, you wanted to have a beta branch for uh, later down the line. So what? where did the beta branch come from for, for this particular patch? Because it doesn't seem like the biggest patch and it also doesn't seem like anything is necessarily broken there is there was there more intended for this one and the beta branch was kind of a, a half step or is there another reason for the beta branch this time uh the uh what was the exact thing uh major bug fixes cleaned out lingering data from auto saves and manual saves that one is worrying uh it, there might have been a chance of that like causing more save corruption we didn't want to push that out immediately Okay. Like if if that if that were to happen, that would be really bad. So putting it on the beta branches was the was deemed the best way to do it. And uh, once that's fixed, then a lot of safe corruption issues are fixed. So that's that that's pretty good. But like making it, it, it's best that it doesn't actually cause more in the process. That'd be horrible. Yeah, the the only issue that I've had since swapping over to beta was I had a crash, which we thought happened during a save screen, but it actually happened right after the save, which was interesting. And then everything was fine. So, um, but uh, it might be related to the fix, but like as long as it saved successfully, it's not too terrible. Yeah, I'm totally it's, fine. It's still kind of it. bad, but it's not too terrible. I'm totally fine with it as long as it doesn't brick my save file. But, um. That, that particular save file has some weirdness going on. It takes, like, uh, about 10 minutes to do a seasonal save because it gets stuck on uh, the, whatever the um, adventurer's portion of saving is where it's just, like, checking adventure data or whatever, and it just sits there. Yeah, I, so. I have... Uh, I, I see no good things happening there. Like, I, 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 I've looked into what it's trying to do, and the answer is it's saving adventure mode data. So what's it saving? I just don't know. There, there, there's some speculation going on that there's just like uh, a lot of adventurers in that world, but I don't, I haven't seen that many monsters. No, hunters, no, no, so. it's adventure mode data. It's your own adventurer stuff that it's saving. That oh, that uh, literally doesn't exist. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm baffled. <laughs> okay. Well, um, on uh, thing, things being fixed. Notes. Um, the stock screen opens really quickly now in the beta branch for uh, version forty or fifty point oh eight one B or whatever it's called. Um, so what what kind of went into uh, that, and what what was the process of making the stock screen open faster? Uh, I looked. I, I thought, oh yeah, I need to fix that. I looked through the code to find where exactly it's like organizing everything what might be causing that or i think i actually profiled it because you always profile it and i found that it was uh, the part that's like building the whole list and i looked at the part that's building the list and what it was doing is it's uh it's going through all of the items that are in play and saying all right here's this item now let me just uh find the place in the list that it's supposed to go you know is it supposed to go at the end no at the end minus one no at the end minus one no at the end minus at the end minus three no at the end minus four no and it just went through that, and like, when you have 5,000 items, if you have 10,000 items, then by the 5,000th item, it's searching through five, like, 2,500 items on average per item. Oh, boy. So, uh, yeah, quadratic complexity, it's, it, basically, it was doing an insertion sort to uh, put together the items, which is, like, quadratic complexity and ends up being, like pretty untenable at high amount so i just swapped it to uh just just toss them all into the list and then sort the list after it's all done which is a lot faster that's that's that, that's that's usually how all the really big uh performance improvements are made whoops we're using a slightly bad algorithm here let's make it a bit better one and thus make it you know give it a uh an over log n speed up or whatever which is quite a lot actually I know that it's definitely been like a night and day difference for a lot of people. Like, you know, the difference between waiting 15, 20 seconds for a window to open and it just opening is such a huge change. Like, 
it doesn't yeah, really affect had... the game that much in the grand scheme of things, but it's still massive. If you had, uh, let's say, 2,000 items, it would do, on average, uh, 4 million uh, like checks and pushes and things. 4 million operations, let's say, to uh, put together that thing. And now it does about 22,000 operations to do that. that. That's an approximation, of course. It's just, that's the big O, but... Yeah, no, I, I I'm just... I like I just think back to when I was playing Long Death and it was literally like all right I'm going to like get up and go use the toilet because <laughs> I just hit the stock screen open menu and then I start scrolling down it and I hit like I on the old UI when you would go from like item to item on that and then I'd hit the the blocks one and it would just like freeze up again it's like all right can <laughs> get up and leave again um because I think that map had like 40,000 blocks or something at one point um it got to a point where I just kind of stopped opening the, the stock screen because it took so long. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm personally really happy that that's changed, especially for people who like building really big forts and also because the current version of the game like incentivizes uh, constructed floors over uh, smoothed floors. So blocks everywhere. Yeah, a lot of items. A lot of items. Uh, the... Sometimes I get like, hey, can you tell me why my fort is running at 6 FPS when all of the ice melts? And I'm like, oh, well, it's probably just rebuilding stuff. This is a 16 by 16, by the way. And I'm like, oh, you were expecting better? And, like, this isn't one of those cases at all. It should be running better, and it is now. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I mean, if, if you're running a 16 by 16 map with an uncapped population, things are going to get slow. I I actually do this. I, I, I never cap my population anymore because I'm doing so much work into optimization that I'm like, okay... I need to figure out what makes the game slow at higher populations, so I just keep pushing it up and up to see how that gets worse and fixing whatever the worst growing things are, if that's possible. Well, de definitely off topic from my list of topics here, but uh, there was that person on Reddit who had, what, 5,000 citizens in a fort with using checkerboard patterns for everything and still yeah. had 10 frames a second. So yeah, it's believable. Uh, they have to be spread out too. You have to like build a specific checkerboard pattern so they don't try to clump up, which they really do otherwise. And uh, um, at that point, you're not really running a fort; you're running like a weird zoo. But <laughs> eh, it's always kind of a weird zoo in Door Fortress. Yeah, that's true. So one of my favorite changes from the the, the beta branch is uh, made all stockpiles not include the refuse option purely because it now makes the tutorial legitimate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not a horrible noob trap anymore. The other change with the clothing thing, I'm not sure. Uh, that one, I'm less sure about. The all stockpiles not including refuse, that one's, like, obvious and, like, mm. needed. The, the clothing refuse one, that's simply, if you have a refuse pile that has clothes enabled, it won't degrade the clothes. But I'm not sure that's actually desired. I, I mean, for, for me, as somebody who uses um, refuse stockpiles to degrade clothes, um, I, that one's a little perplexing to me. I guess I'm just going to go back to crushing clothes. Um, it, was, it was like, I was thinking either or, and we ended up just putting both in. Because, you know, you click the funny all button because that seems like a good idea, but it turns out it's not. But now it isn't a bad idea. I mean, it's not like a good idea, but it's not a bad idea now. And yeah, that's, and that's for the best. If you need to get all of your stuff underground because there's 42 undead somethings walking towards your wagon and you haven't unpacked your wagon yet, it's, it's a quick solution. It's one button. It's one of those uh, experience curve things, you know, when you're low experience, like... Uh, you know, like low experience players, haha, -ha, use an all stockpile. Mid experience players, no, you shouldn't use an all stockpile. You should be more specialized. High experience players, use an all stockpile and then link it. That sort of thing. Or it's like but, uh, new players <laughs> live in dirt, old players live in stone. Something. Something like that. Um. So now, now dwarves um are capable of drinking from barrels if their hands don't work. So the the main reason this is like a bug fix that was needed is because uh sometimes dwarves lose control lose their hands for some reason they get chopped off or they're like you know their nerves are severed in both hands or they get like freaky goop on them and i mean usually they're just left with skeleton hands after that that still works somehow so that's not as much of a problem either way uh 
The point is, if your dwarves had no hands, they would inevitably dehydrate because they would grab a mug, haul it to the stockpile, try to grab it in their hand to get a drink out of the thing, but they don't have a hand, so they couldn't do that, so they'd drop it, then they'd pick it up to haul it, and it, it would just go on forever like that until they died. They don't They do not do that anymore. Uh, problem. Minor problem. They will keep trying to do that. If they were doing that before this patch, you'll have to forbid the mug they're holding, but then they'll go and drink like normal. Uh, so that was a problem. That was a real problem that people would occasionally experience. It wasn't common, though, unless you're using mods. Like me, I play with mods nearly exclusively, even now. And uh, I have some sapients that don't have grasps, and they would just visit your fort and then die because you have mugs. So I decided that's that's worth fixing, and so I fixed it. That's got to be kind of wild to actually have the power to do that now. Oh, yeah. Able, to be able to fix it. It's like going from just playing a game for forever to now it's like, oh, well, I can, I can fix this. Actually can fix this. Instead it's of actually just happened for... Mod. 50.06 or 50.05, uh, Squamous, the like creator of the Dark Ages mod, I think, was complaining a lot about like uh, summoned units in sieges not working correctly, and I was like, oh, well, I can fix that. I can look and see how that works, and yeah, I did fix that. So now that's all put together. Uh, people who are sieging you who summon units, the summoned units are now part of the siege and will act like that. So that's all good. That's That's good for mods. I mean, it was. I think it was even a non-mod thing. If like a necromancer sieged you and they summoned a nightmare, they wouldn't do much. Huh? I don't think I've ever had a nightmare summoned. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure that? it's a thing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a thing. Huh? I mean, I'm reasonably confident. Or boogeyman. I yeah, I've never seen a boogeyman in fortress mode. Like I know that they exist. I've seen them in adventure mode. I've died to them many times in adventure mode, but I've never seen one in fortress mode. Out, outside of uh, that one person who, I can't remember who it was, or I would name them, but uh, who's, who spent ages doing science to, like, die in certain places in adventure mode to be able to play as a boogeyman, to be able to make a boogeyman join a fort. It sounds like Rum Rusher work, but also Rum Rusher is usually more direct with the TF neck and such, so it might have, but, like, that sounds like the old body surfing bug, which is a classic, but, yeah. uh... Well, become an angel. How else, are, how else are you going to become some sentient deity? Well, if you're using DF hack, you can just edit their normal cast and wear cast, and then they're then they'll just transform into it in the very next frame. But you know that's that that's cheating. That's cheating. Just just go take a nap in a fun spire. It's fine. <laughs> True. Take a nap in some uh, water in the middle of winter. Uh, that sort of thing. Um, the, uh, the, speaking of water, the, the last thing on here that I kind of want to mention because it, it, it leads into the next subject quite nicely is, um, allowed, uh, most water-based jobs to use buckets that are partially filled bucket, water buckets in addition to empty buckets. So I, I, I think about this one because I, this is like one of the few things I use DF hack for is to empty buckets. Yeah, I, I looked at eight partially filled water buckets around my well. I looked at that in my fort and I was like... No. How does no, that? No, I, I don't want that. How did that even happen before? I uh, it looked for an empty bucket. <laughs> it it didn't. There, there, I don't think there was an empty bucket job, and that's it. So I just made it like it doesn't look for an empty bucket anymore. It looks for a bucket that is either empty or has only water in it. Okay, so no milk buckets then. <laughs> no milk buckets. Yeah. Hopefully. Okay. Hopefully. I, I, so I, I guess my, my dream of making a milk uh, mister is uh, just uh, a no-go still. Oh, well. Um, but no, se seriously, uh, it's it's nice to not have to, like, you know, empty all <laughs> on DF hack anymore um, because they'll just use buckets. It's great. And you're not, you're not filling your fort with buckets because you have a condition to set, set up to, you know, make more buckets if there's empty buckets. Whoops, there's never empty buckets. They keep half-filling them, but... That's that's less of a problem now. I can't I can't say I've ever done that. I've always just been like, a, whenever traders would show up, I'd just buy like five more buckets to make sure I have a couple. Yeah, always... I, I I'm a I'm a work orders fan. That reminds me, I need to once the SDL two updates done, and probably there there's two big things I'm thinking I want to do. Mm -hmm. Well, three, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> the first one is already mostly done, which is like reworking the rods a bit to make it a. Uh, <clears throat> less uh it should make loading times faster 
It'll definitely make reverse engineering easier, which I don't know if that's a goal I should be going for. <laughs> but uh, that's just a coincidence. The reason it makes reverse engineering easier is because one of these functions compiles into this absolute monster that uses up all my RAM and makes the game nearly impossible to compile on Linux, which is the real reason I'm fixing it. And what, But like with that update, just like by coincidence, I'm also probably like adding select and cut for every other, for all the stuff that doesn't have it and like expanding feature variations to include all other things. So mods should be way, way more expressive. I mean, with that's all a good that. thing. Yeah, that is a good thing. Uh, the second thing I want to do, performance. It's generic enough. I don't need to say more. The third thing I want to do, uh, more UI overhaul stuff, because how did I even start this? It, oh, work orders. Uh, the big linear list of work orders. I don't like that. Add some folders or drop downs or tabs or something to organize them better. I, I, that, that's what I'm looking at with I, that screen. I don't generally do repeating work orders, but there are times where I'll have a lot of work orders. Mm -hmm. Like I'll have, I don't know, like two pages worth. And I find that once the second page is full, the game stops scrolling nicely. Like if I'm yeah, using the I'm mouse a... wheel, it just like it'll scroll down, and then I'll just like keep spinning the mouse wheel, and it'll just stop scrolling, and I'll have to click on the bar and drag it to. I, I show have. The bottom. I usually have like forty work orders that are all like conditional repeating stuff. So that that yeah, the, the UI is not great for me. Uh, so that's a thing, and like that's like priority like six or seven of the UI changes after like, you know, making one big unified unit list, which you can like sort in which each individual screen can have its own like specialized sorting method for like the you know the squad list it'll work the same as it like like what i'm planning for is like say you open the squad assignment list it'll open and it'll be the same as other unit lists you can click on them and see their stuff and all that in and uh instead of just everything being stuck in the order that they arrived in the fort yeah instead of just being in order in the active vector or whatever but uh the and then, like, you click the relevance uh, sorting thing, and then it shows you, like, first all of your dwarves who aren't already in a squad, and aren't, and then all the dwarves who aren't uh, miners and woodcutters or whatever. <laughs> who actually this has skills, easier. whether or not they yeah, do and then it'll go, skill. And then it'll go through, like, skill, and then it'll do it in order of skill, and then maybe... Like, because you can, you know, be as granular as you want with these sorting algorithms, then maybe if they have the same skill, it'll do it by, like, strength or something. Who knows? I, I just want to be able to sort by who dreams of mastering a skill, because that's the main thing I look for for soldiers. Yeah, that are, uh, well, that's that that's a good one. Uh, excitement seeking is also a good thing, because then they spar more. All sorts of stuff. All, there There's a lot. More, more ways to sort them. I don't know how desirable that actually, like, I mean, it obviously is desirable, but I don't know, like, like how much, how much is too much before the UI starts getting grody? I mean, advanced filters and a little drop down menu would be incredible, but I think the main thing people want is just alphabetical sorting. <laughs> yeah. And like, that's, that's the one that I see constantly is just, we, we do have this. that on the one screen. <laughs> yeah. Which is why people it, complain it's... about it specifically. It's probably better, yeah, it would be, it, it, like, for sure, I want that everywhere, that there's units, that there's anything, really. Alphabetical sorting, it's easy to grok. And also, uh, in the trade menu, a select all button for certain types of things. So I don't, yeah, because if there's trading. multiple types, you have to, like, click the, because, like, uh, when I would trade old clothing previously in older versions, I would just search by, search by X, and then just shift enter and then move on to the next thing shift enter uh, and i can't, i can't do that anymore there's there, there's there's just a lot to think about and like it i i don't know where to prior it depends on how much work it'll actually be uh there's some things that are more important than adventure mode and some things that kind of aren't like uh what was it the the way rendering works right now is i mean you could see it i uh if you didn't see the news, which you probably didn't, I posted the latest version of a uh, G source, which is like the graphics part of Dwarf Fortress on uh, GitHub for ah, yeah, yeah. everyone to look at and browse and things. You can see how the rendering works there. It's mm -hmm. pretty dang grody. It is not very. I do not like it. Uh, the Toady one is doesn't like it. it it's all very stifling and makes it hard to build uis in a reasonable way dfhack gets around it like 
beautifully, but they only get around it. It's still really weird and like tile based and just makes it like like smooth scrolling is impossible with it. All that sorts of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that would take a long, long time to update. We are not doing that before adventure mode because it just it Seems it like works. It's just time. hard to. It's just it, it it works. It's just like it's just like too a, a bit. Any updates like it kind of resists against that, but it's not like a, it's not a waste of time, but it can't be prioritized over adventure mode, which is important, you know. Yeah. Well, or like, uh, whatever UI stuff can be done before updating that. Yeah, no, it, it, it adventure mode is 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 something that needs to be worked on, and before then, it's from what I can tell, it just seems to be stuff that is making people stop playing the game right now, um, which is mostly UI stuff. I do need to assure people on this. The Mark Store thing, we know about it. There are plans. I uh the plans were like drawn up. Like like I'm not even, I, I don't even know about the specific plans, but like there there there's a whole thing. There's it's a rework of how ammo is assigned and all that. Like Mark Dwarves, they should work and right now the whole system's kind of broken. People say fix the Mark Dwarf bug as like a patch note. There is no Mark Dwarf bug. The entire yeah thing is bad it's it's like kind of just a rotten system that's never really worked well so it's easier at this point to make something that actually works from the ground up when it comes to mark stores like that's that's certainly something that i see complained about a lot i personally just kind of work with the system of i never liked them to begin with and like used to use them a little bit on older versions but on this version it's just I, it's 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 just not worth it as far as i can tell like they're quite effective if they're well trained but they're just so fiddly so when, when i see people saying it's like have they fixed mark's dwarves yet it's like oh boy um i hmm. like the the fixes like like the, like the things in mind are like you know getting your like an actual way in the ui to get your hunters to use bone bolts while your military uses metal bolts or whatever that sort of thing or and, and wooden boats are only bolts are only for training or you can swap that around as you want that sort of thing that's all that that was never a thing and made mark's dwarves like horrible to use in the first place and like would rather have that alongside the we would we would rather have that than uh like trying to patch up this already quite leaky system that doesn't work well <laughs> i never used mark's dwarves i've been playing since 2011 i have not used mark's dwarves in a single fort because they were always kind of bad and now they're actually like actively unusable even for people who are used to them and that's worse actually i'm not saying that it's an excuse not to fix them i'd say it's an excuse to make them better <laughs> every now and again i'll see a screenshot of somebody in a fort where they're working perfectly and it's always a that's impressive Ow. I wouldn't go through the tedium to do that myself, but I'm impressed. <laughs> I, I think looking at it from from the outside of as somebody who plays the game a lot but doesn't know how any of it actually works under the hood, it's it's just kind of like I, I feel bad for people because it's it's the one feature that's in the game right now that is just straight up broken. And there's probably going to be somebody in the comments section underneath this who's like, "Now, ah, well, this is a list of other things that are just straight up broken." It's like. Sure, but like I can, there's workarounds for everything else, and there none of them are as like broken as thoroughly. Like you can't assign ammo to squads right now. That's it's and it, it's be it, it. The weird part is that that's not even that much worse than it used to be. But just being able to assign ammo at least like made things work consistently because then they wouldn't go drop it afterwards. And, yeah, the dropping things, the who's assigned ammo and what and all that, that's just bizarre. And there's also stuff with, like, you know, uh, backpacks and grabbing food and leaving it on the floor to rot, that sort of thing that all needs to be looked at. There's just so... there's it, In general, what you need to know is uh, uniforms kind of su- are, like, just a whole thing that needs to... that I, I don't know what to do with them. They're, Maybe they're... the toady one knows. There was I, I, that, I trust him to think about something. There was that group of people that really wanted civilian uniforms, to which I responded, no! <laughs> just, yeah, no, you I, don't. <laughs> you want fewer uniforms in general, because they're just... They're not fun. Uh, like, woodcutters, miners, and uh, hunters, they're 
also they've also got problems just because of the uniforms thing. Like I'm seeing reports of uh you know people who th- their miners just won't mine. Uh, I heard like I saw someone ask if it was a fifty point oh eight thing, and I said no. I heard about it in fifty point oh seven. I don't know what it is though. I I don't know if it's a uniform problem. It might be. I don't know. It's it's all. <laughs> Uh, for for me, the only time that I run into issues with miners just not mining is when I have a ton of jobs set up, and th- I don't have any miners that have like the little red tick that says that they only specifically mine, because that's what I do now when I'm doing a lot of mining and I have a lot of other active jobs running in the fort, especially if I don't have a huge number of dwarves, I remove the they can go do other labors thing. Because then they just go mine, otherwise I find that they're just like off making like leather pants or something. Yeah, job priorities are goofy. Maybe maybe we should just like multiply the priority of mining by ten or something to make sure that gets done. For for me, it seems like anything that requires a tool should just be like maximum priority at all times. It's yeah, like probably wood, wood cutting and mining. That's... I mean, c- considering like deconstruction requires a pick now, which I only learned like the other week. Which I, is... I'm not sure that I'm not. Even, I don't even know if that's intentional. I, I looked in the code. It's there. It, I, I can confirm it, but I don't know if it was like an intentional change. It, if it was a change, I don't even. It didn't feel like it was that. That was the case before. I mean, before it was never the case. Before, like you, you would like deconstruct like I don't know two hundred ground tiles, and like your entire fort would be there. So, yeah. like I, it's and I, yeah, no, it's it's bizarre. And then chat informed me of this, and I was like, really? And then now, and then I I looked at it, I looked into it, and it was like, okay, well, that explains why my deconstructions take forever now, <laughs> because like it's waiting for one of five dwarves with a pickaxe. Hmm. I wonder if mass deconstruction might also be a general strike thing. Oh, all, speaking of things in Dwarf Fortress that are just like categorically broken still, or rather not. I I mean, mega creatures and like um forgotten beasts and trolls still can't rip doors off their hinges i have no idea it might be to do with the like uh changes to uh tightly closed doors i don't know that that might also have just been like a ui change i didn't look actually look at the code to determine if that's still like in the game in any respect we we uh, everybody talks about it all the time because it's like uh, the 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 like audience theory that my chats hypothesize is that it's something to do with like workshop code because workshops don't get toppled by trolls anymore. Um, at least that anybody's seen that I know of. So that might it could be because uh, like workshops don't block certain angles anymore either, which they yeah, used to. It, that was a raw change though. So, so that's not as well. Well, okay, no, it wasn't. But <laughs> it was for a soap maker workshop. But for everything else, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That, that that's that's the one that really bothers me because it like it it makes cavern forts so easy now. Like you can just trap a forgotten beast in a hallway. Just <laughs> no concerns yeah, there. Yeah, the just have bait doors. Uh, lack of building destroyer. I I not. It might be like an optimization. Like an inadvertent thing with optimization because building destroyers have to do their own like weird pathing that slows down the game a bit if it's happening too much. Huh. And uh yeah, that it might have to do with that. I I don't know what the actual deal is there. I should look into that. The 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 weird thing about that for me is whenever I bring it up and there's, you know, people watching, um, I always get one of two responses. Either, oh god, I'm so happy that that's a thing that's in the game and I hope they don't fix it, or yeah, no, they need to fix that because, like, if suddenly, like, Forgotten Beasts and, like, Angels and uh, Brutes and whatnot and uh, Trolls can just, like, knock and, like, I guess Ogres can just start knocking down doors, like, so many forts are just going to die in an update. Well, an update's going to roll out and then here. everybody's just going to get wrecked because, like, let's, yeah, let's be clear here. Uh, maybe they deserved, maybe they deserve it. <laughs> if, if 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 they were relying on that but like i do it too except i'm at the point now where like i yeah, I, like, I lock something like making in fun of it <laughs> i lock something in like in, in 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 a door and then i build around it like on the outside yeah, so i'll put extra you're walls like on. making fun of the fact that it happens now you're like you're like hey look it's broken i can just lock these forgotten beasts in their little zoo it's funny that's a different thing than like uh i don't know like Varg Skeletor Joel trying to stop a trying to stop an incursion from 
you know, the hidden fun stuff by locking a door and finding out that that doesn't work. That 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 that's a good moment. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be gone. Yeah, it it it, it should. I mean, that's uh, artifact doors are valueless now. That yeah, that's that's also bad. Because ar- artifact doors or artifact trap doors were the greatest thing in the world because that was how you'd stop, like, an incoming invasion from hell or a forgotten beast because you just you have a door and you just lock it. Yeah, and it's got a very story-like quality to it. You know, like this is the high. This is a, the extremely high-quality door. Door the the rumors say was made by someone possessed by the gods whose name is forgotten because they weren't a legendary <laughs> door maker after they made it because they were possessed. Anyway. Uh, it kept the demons in, and don't open it. This is a dwarf bone door. Do not open the dwarf bone bone door. <laughs> that 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 particular like story that can pretty easily happen organically in the game just can't right now, and that's annoying. I've seen reports of a uh, of building destroyers actually taking down doors. Really? Uh, it had. I I seem to recall they all had the really goofy prerequisite that the door is you could, that you could just walk around the door though. So, I, so that's not good. I the 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 one instant. Okay, another weird thing that I saw with doors was I had a locked door, and I deconstructed both walls on either side, and the locked door was still there, independently without any walls. So, I wonder if it's similar to that. <laughs> uh, tomb tomb crashes. That's a classic. I know what causes that. I think I might have sent in a fix for that, or at least mentioned what the fix ought to be. I don't even remember. I'll probably ask about whether it might have even gotten in at some point uh if you like unassign a tomb or a bedroom at uh it would like not clean or like better yet like destroy them it wouldn't clean up properly and it would still be assigned to the unit even though it's gone and now there's no pointers dangling and it's all not no pointers but invalid pointers which is even worse actually and it's horrible so now that we've dove down uh, this list of things that need to be fixed that haven't been yet, um, so, uh, so I I ran into a a, a, a I, I guess it's fair to call it a bug, a, a, a bug in the first few weeks after the game was released, which has now just like stopped happening because the situation that would cause it to happen is now significantly less likely because everybody playing is used to this version now. Um, but uh, we used to call it the general strike bug, um, where every all jobs would just stop, and um, you mentioned to me that uh, you figured out what was causing that at this point, um, which is something to do with seeds and farms and running out of seeds. I figured out what was happening on the one fort you sent me. I'm not sure I figured it out in general because there could because it's a it's the kind of bug that could be caused by a lot of things. It's not a bug. It's just bad. <laughs> it's a. Uh... Basically, each dwarf can only consider up to three jobs, and they'll only consider the three highest priority jobs. And if they uh, that uh, that they can do, and if they are uh, not, and like if someone else takes that job, then they just won't be doing any job in that particular job assignment, like session, which I think happens every. 100 or a thousand ticks so once every one or ten seconds so like you'll see a lot of no jobs if you have like five or six or as was the case in the fort you sent me 41 uh really high priority jobs that are wanting doing and uh the problem was basically Planting is an unusually high priority job right now because the waiting because job priorities are weighted based on uh, the skill of the dwarf who's looking at the job, and planting is counted double for that waiting, so it just ends up with higher priority planting than any other job for anyone who has, like if you have zero skill in uh, having zero skill in planting is equivalent to having one skill in any other skill and having one skill in planting is equivalent to having like four skill and so on it's it's weird uh but so every dwarf was like oh hey i need to plant a i need to plant a seed oh wait there's actually no seeds to plant cancel that 
And the problem with this is that there weren't any seeds to plant, and the game shouldn't be generating jobs for seeds to plant. And it turns out the reason it was doing that was because there were a bunch of seeds that it was considering valid for planting because they weren't... Because uh, while they were inside the building, the, plant, the, the seed itself didn't know it was inside a building, but the job selection process did know that it was inside the building, so it cancelled it because, hey, that's not actually available, it's inside a building. But the seed selection process didn't know that. And also the fact that the seed itself didn't know it was inside a farm plot meant that it wasn't growing. So that would just happen forever and ever. And uh, that's like, so, so, so there's like, we're like two steps of abstraction away from general strike now. And the real problem is, hey, sometimes seeds just forget they're in a farm plot and never grow and keep asking to be planted. But they can't be planted. So they cause like spammy job cancellation forever. That's another problem unto itself, and I don't know what causes that in the first place still, and it's maddening. Yeah, if it's not happening much lately, maybe it was fixed. Maybe it was like, I don't know, weird save corruption that happened to be picked up along the way. That's that's what I'm hoping for. Someone's going to send me a save in like 50.25 that still has it, and I'm going to lose my hair, though. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way we'll get... I, I doubt we'll get to 50.25. For one thing, it, it, is Adventure Mode going to still be 50? Yeah, I, I was like, I need to ask Tarn this because I'm trying to have him on my stream again at some point soon, and uh, I, 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 I'm really curious to know what version number adventure mode will be because my my bet would be uh, sixty, but I don't oh, know. I hope not. That's way too much. The problem is that like the fifty, I think, already includes a lot of adventure mode, even though it's not technically in the game. Well, I mean, a lot of there's a lot of graphics in the game right now that aren't in the game. <laughs> Maybe in arena mode. If if you look at the old list, then it's like, uh, then like graphics, better UI, more sounds. That was that was actually three of the core features that like bump up the version. So that that actually adds up. But but like, there was no subtraction for adventure mode being temporarily removed. So that I think the fifty is only for the graphics. And I I don't know if the thing is we will have some at the very least like. I'm gunning for it. If 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 adventure mode doesn't release with mouse movement, I'm going to be cross. It it's going to like require interference to get it released without mouse movement. Uh, it's not like anyone doesn't want it. We've already determined that. I mean, why would it release without mouse movement? Uh, you know, lightning strike happens and changes the source code in such a way that it makes it impossible. Mostly, huh? Thus, thus why I would be mad. It would take a very unlucky break for that to happen. Okay, <laughs> I was gonna say because like every, everything I've heard is ab about adventure mode plants is that it's going to have mouse movement. So, yeah, mouse movement and maybe I don't know. There's a few things I want to look into that. Look forward to line of sight code mattering more in adventure mode. Oh no! I will certainly be using a numpad if it lets me. Uh oh, that would be horrible to remove. Every all, all the modern roguelikes use a numpad. They should. Otherwise, they're not yeah. very good. I've encountered ones that don't, and it's like, what? <laughs> huh. What do they require? Do they use HJKL? Usually, they just use, um, like, mouse. But I, I used one that was, like, it was WASD, but to move diagonally, you'd hit, like, D and W, or, like, A and W, or A and S. So you'd hit two buttons to move diagonally. Oh, which was I can see that going bad. Okay, I suppose. But no, I very quickly when I find games like that that don't support numpad movement or don't support proper binding for a button for each direction, I just I use mouse. Yeah, I think people are worrying a bit about adventure mode. Don't I'm 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 like to this day I'm still a roguelike player. I play actual like modern roguelikes, a lot of them, like a lot. So Caves it's, it's I know I know Caves controls, yeah, that sort of thing. I know what the controls are supposed to sort of look like, how a mouse-enabled but also keyboard-usable UI in these games is supposed to go. Yep. No, it makes sense. Um, and that's that's the way that type of... That, that portion of the game should feel. I think the, the, the thing that has me worried isn't just... Um, like, like, I'm sure Adventure Mode, when it's out, will be fine. The thing that has me worried is the amount of time it's going to take. Because uh, there's, there's definitely, like, even when the beta announcement came out the other day, there was people saying, does it include adventure mode? It's like, <laughs> Yeah, people think it'll be, like, a month's work. I, I'm i sorry. It won't. My estimation's it, it a won't. year from when it like, started. 
the SDL2 beta branch, look forward to it. It's coming soon. That was a few months' work, and that's less. <laughs> that's just less than Adventure Mode. Well, it's just I mean, less to do. It's still progress. So. It is progress. By the way, look forward to that. Uh, I. I will not be held responsible for any game-breaking bugs you experience if you turn on the this is not a joke setting. This this really does what it says. If you turn on the setting that says multi-threading experimental, it's a happy little accident. I'm sorry. What's being multi-threaded? Line of sight code. Oh, wow. Yeah, I got a 10%. <laughs> I got it. I'm sorry. It's really funny when I say it out loud. I got a 10% improvement in FPS in a 260 unit for it that way. Uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. 10% improvement on top of the uh, 80% or so improvement I got from uh, changing how units are allocated. Which was the previous big bump, right? Yeah. Well, that one's not out yet either. So, oh. like, okay. Expect. Expect a 70 or 80% boost. I, like, no exaggeration. That big of a boosted performance from the SDL2 version. It can be really big in larger forts. Do we know when that's out? Uh, as soon as 50.08 is released properly, I'll merge it into my side, and then I'll send over stuff, and then we can put up the SDL2 version, hopefully within the week. Wow. So, like, rapid-fire beta branches, then, once this branch is done. That is what I'm hoping for, yeah. Do we have... Like, as soon as this branch is no longer beta, I'll put up the... Is there an idea of how long this current branch is going to be in beta? N is... I don't have one, but I, based on how little I've seen complaints about it, I'd hope it's not not much longer. Yeah, I, I mean, like, the only weird anomaly I've had is that one crash, but... Eh. From my... This is actually not an insider perspective at all. It's important to note. From my not-at-all-insider perspective... Uh, I, I don't know who's planning what. I, I would hope it's coming out this week officially. Cool. Well, good to know. Um, I think... Oh, mm -hmm. DF Hack. Yes, I, I was about to just bring that up and just be like, DF Hack is now out on Steam. So that's pretty cool. And 50.08 includes official support for it in the form of, uh, instead of overwriting SDL.dll, it now... Uh, Dwarf Fortress now searches for a DF hooks, uh, DLL or .so or Dialib or whatever on, on whichever platform you're you you so want to play on. And if if you uninstall DF hack, it uh, you just need to verify your Dwarf Fortress files, and it just rewrites those two DLLs, and then it's fine. You don't even need to do that anymore. Oh, as of fifty point oh eight, instead it searches for a completely separate file. Huh. That uh, that Steam won't stomp by verifying game files, and it's just generally much less of a headache. So that's all good. But yeah, no, I I'm excited to have DF Hack on Steam. I I think I'm just gonna be fiddling with this version for a little bit, and uh, you know, see if I still hate it like I did with older versions. Um, but we'll we'll see. I, I still I like using it as a debug menu that I have to launch separately, not so much as like a tool for actually playing the game. But uh, gonna mess with it for a couple weeks. It, it's really good as a debug menu. I use it like that kind of a lot because uh, you know I'm doing like really proper debugging now, and you got to do that. It, it, it's, it's nice to have access to the to have like smart access to the memory. The debugger has issues sometimes with accessing a lot of that stuff. DFAC does not. I just, I have this issue where I'm really compulsive, and if it's easy to cheat, it's way too easy for me to cheat. <laughs> yeah, that's so, fair. I, I, I mean, the cheating disabled. tools are also helpful for debugging. Oh, certainly. Well, yeah, I mean, that's like, like the, half of debugging, isn't it? <laughs> like, the, uh, the, th the other thing people are calling general strike, but it's really not the same, where everyone is, like, standing still outside and dying of thirst, uh, just doing nothing forever. Uh, I figured out what caused that pretty quickly with DF hack by just killing uh, an agitated giant crow and then they all started moving around. And that's basically how it works every time. <laughs> they're, they're, they're trying to kill something they can't reach. I did send in a fix for that. I'd, it, we're, we're, we're improving upon our... Uh, we're improving upon our organization now because we started losing track of all the little things I was sending in fixes for. 
Uh, and that's an important one. Uh, in fact, I think I might have just forgotten to mention that until just now, even. That, uh, like, if the target they're trying... If they fail to pathfind to the target they want to kill, they'll just stop trying to kill it. And that should fix that bug completely. It, at least it did in the test forts I was using. I mean, that'll be great even for, like, repositioning military dwarves, so... Yeah. Because currently... Fi well, not currently. Fire creatures are a pain because they block pathing by simply just putting wall of fire down. Oh, yeah. And, and sometimes... then they get stuck, and I think it might actually fix that. And it, comple <laughs> it also completely wrecks your... Or would wreck your frame rate because they'd be trying to path across it, too. Um, they might still... But... Eh. Eh, it does, I mean... As, as long as it's easier to disengage them from a target they can't see or get to or hit or do anything to and just be a sitting duck, that would be nice. Congratulations, you've made it to the end of Coder's Workshop. If you would like to support this show and myself further, you can do that via my Patreon or by jumping over to my merchandise store and picking up a mug or a sticker or a t-shirt or a hoodie because those are the things I currently have. If you would like to view other things related to Dwarf Fortress with your eyeballs, you can do that on this YouTube channel or over on my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash blind IRL. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next thing I upload.